Alrighty, so in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at Zorin OS 16 for the Raspberry Pi 4. So if you don't know what Zorin OS is, it is a Linux distribution based off of Ubuntu. And this has never been available for the Raspberry Pi 4 until now. It's always been available for desktop PCs and laptops. But now they're actually finally going to release versions for the Raspberry Pi 4. So right now, I'm actually just running this off basically an SD card and you have to install this by installing the Ubuntu 20.04 server and then you actually have to type in all these commands right here there there's not that many but that is the way you get Zorin OS on your Raspberry Pi 4 and thanks to this person in my discord server for letting me know how to do this I wouldn't have no idea that I could do this without that person so thank you so much but it's not that hard you just in flash Ubuntu 20.04 server to an SD card and then you just copy these commands over, reboot, and there you go. You have Zorin OS on your Raspberry Pi 4. So it's pretty simple. I'll leave a link to this um, blog in the description, and you can try it out yourselves. But to talk more about Zorin OS, Zorin OS is a Linux distribution based off of Ubuntu, like I said before, and this is the full version, so it uses GNOME as its desktop environment. And like I said in one of my last videos, that GNOME is pretty heavy for the Raspberry Pi 4. So this operating system does not have as great performance as I wish because it's using a really heavy desktop environment like GNOME. If it was using something lighter like XFCE, LXDE, the performance would be a bit better, but with GNOME you get this really slick looking desktop and everything looks amazing. That's why they probably went for GNOME and I can agree with that because it, my desktop looks so amazing. So right here I am on the Zorin OS desktop, and let's look at some system resource usage now. So let's open up our terminal, Control alt t and that will open up a terminal for me, and right here I'm going to type, type htop, so this will give me some information. So right now I am idle, I'm really not doing anything on the system whatsoever, and right now my memory is at 1.8 gigabytes, 1.08, so it's about 1 gigs of RAM while idle, so that is still a lot for the Raspberry Pi 4, just like normal Ubuntu that runs GNOME, it's pretty similar, which is understandable because they're pretty much the same thing, just some different theming. But yeah, so RAM usage is pretty high, so if you're going to be using like a 2GB Pi, you might not want to use this operating system because it is definitely all too much RAM usage for that Pi. And our CPUs are pretty low, normal there, so nothing wrong there. And we do have a lot of resource going as you see down here. But that is basically the system resource usage of here. If I was to web browse and do different stuff like that, my RAM usage would go up a bit to... The most I've seen it go up is about 4 gigabytes, so that is still a lot. But since I have the 8 gigabyte, it's not a huge problem for me, but it still is a lot of RAM for idle. So now let's take a look at NeoFetch. So let's go Control C, and now let's type NeoFetch. And here we are with NeoFetch on our Raspberry Pi 4 running Zorin OS. So it says Ubuntu right here. They still haven't changed these things because there is no pre-built image yet. But once they do release these pre-built images, we might could expect a bit more optimizations and some better performance in the future. So that will be something to look forward to. But these are just the normal things. We're running GNOME and we are running the Mutter window manager. These are the themes and that is everything about that. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the applications. And you see right here, I just had this graphic glitch. It's super weird right here and this is one of the problems with Zorin OS. I get some graphical glitches like this and you just have to wipe it out like that. That was pretty odd right there as you saw in the video. But I, I get those like every an hour or something on the operating system. So it's still in beta. We still do get some of those graphical glitches like that. So it is kind of annoying. But now let's take a look at the applications. So we click our Zorin menu right here and it kind of has that Windows feel. We go over to accessories and we have just the normal GNOME apps like Vim, GNOME Maps, GNOME Extensions, just different stuff like that. Pretty normal. In games, we also have the... Um, Normal no maps, Sudoku, Mines, different stuff like that. And if we go over to graphics, it comes pre installed with GIMP, Image Viewer, LibreOffice Draw, and Photos. If we go over to Internet, we have Firefox and Remina, which is like a remote desktop app. And Chromium comes pre installed in here. I did, I, I mean, it does not come pre installed. I installed it myself. In Office, we have all the normal LibreOffice apps. And then we have Calendar and Contacts.
and if we go over to sound and video it comes pre-installed with just the rhythm box sound recorder and different stuff like that system tools we have gnome discs additional driver and just some normal things that you expect zorn appearance is also a really cool app i'm going to be showing in one minute and utilities is just the normal utilities that would be on gnome desktop so now on our windows mini right here we actually can access all our folders from right here let's say i want to access my home folder i click on that it's going to open up my file manager right here and it just looks really slick i actually really enjoy this file manager look it looks super clean super awesome and it just looks really modern they've actually developed this one themselves i think i could be wrong on that but it looks like they did but it just looks super clean and i love it and as you see on my bar down here i actually have this transparency which looks really cool in my opinion the black with the transparency man that looks awesome and this is the default wallpaper that comes with zorin os 16. and now to take a look at zorin appearance which is a really cool app that they've actually developed themselves and implemented into this operating system so we have different layouts we can change right now i'm using the default one that comes pre-installed but let's say i'll go with this one this actually makes my whole desktop smaller so you see all the icons everything is a bit smaller now which some people might prefer if they like to have that small desktop i actually am one of those people and i actually really like this look we have this other one right here, and it actually is going to put all the icons in the middle, which do does look pretty cool in my opinion, but I'm not a huge fan of this application launch right here. I click this, and it's actually going to take me to the normal GNOME one rather than the other one, so I don't really like this. That's why I don't really like this appearance. This one... If you are a normal GNOME user, you'd be familiar with this. This is just a normal GNOME desktop. I don't have any bars, anything right here. To access it, I have to click right here, and it shows my applications and my different desktops are right here. I also am not a huge fan of this because I don't find it very accessible, but this one is definitely my favorite. Just the default is great. I love it so much. The theme... We can change the accent color like Windows. So right now it's on blue, which look is probably my favorite. The other ones do look a bit weirder. And the background, it actually comes pre-installed with white. But I actually did change that to black because white mode, it kind of blinds my eyes. I mean, white mode also looks good, but just dark mode really looks good in my opinion. It just looks really awesome. Interface, we have title bar buttons. If you're a Mac user, you might want those on the left. But I... I'm just going to keep it to right right now. Enable animations. I would not recommend doing that on the Pi 4 because it really limits those performance issues. And Jelly Mode is actually really cool, but I also do not recommend enabling this on the Raspberry Pi 4. Like I shake my window right here and it's all it's really wobbly, which looks really cool if you have a powerful computer. But like the Raspberry Pi 4 running GNOME, it's not very good. And with my left super key, I can actually launch the Zorin menu. So let's test that out. I hit the key. It opens up the Zorin menu right here. And I could change that to the activities overview, which is this button right here. But I don't want that. I want the other one. I'm going to leave it to that. And there are just a few more settings down here that I don't really think are useful. And that is about it for the Zorin appearance app. I'm a huge fan of this app. It's really great. And that is it for the applications, basically. I mean, we have our file manager down here, and we have GNOME software. This is the same software center that comes pre-installed with Ubuntu. Really nothing special. It's basically just the Snap Store. And now to take a look at some web browsing in Firefox. I'm not going to test out Chromium. I'm just going to go with a default pre-installed browser that comes on this operating system. So when we launch Firefox, we come to this Zorin Start website. I don't want that one. I'm going to log out right here. And I'm going to go right here and launch Big Bug Bunny. I've actually already saved it. And let's take a look at some YouTube performance and see how it actually performs. And like it did on Ubuntu, I do not expect this thing to perform well at all since youtube performance on the raspberry pi 4 is already pretty broken plus add on top a heavy desktop environment like gnome you're just looking for bad answers pretty much so let's try to launch it hit that play button right there let's look at resolution right here we're at 720p right now that's what i wanted 1080 i'm not even going to try if we look at 720 right now it's already skipping a lot of frames we do stats for nerds and right here, we are dropping 15 out of 325. So we are dropping a ton of frames right now. And it is not very enjoyable to watch. You look at this thing, and it's super like sketchy and just not very enjoyable. 
So Ubuntu anyway on the Pi 4 is not a very good option if you're going to be looking to watch YouTube. So now let's go ahead and look at some web browsing. So let's type in like Pi 4 and just see how fast this thing loads up. So it's it's looking pretty responsive. We go over here to the Raspberry Pi org website because I pretty I like this website. It's pretty cool. So we're right here. We scroll down to the bottom. It's it's pretty smooth, honestly, in Firefox. We scroll back up. It loads right up. Let's say we want to open up another tab. Let's go to Amazon.com. What? I did not want Amazon Prime. Well, we go over to Amazon right here. And we have it loaded right here. We scroll down. We go right here. It's loading up. And yeah, so two tabs does work pretty well. They're not like reloading or anything. So web browsing is acceptable on this operating system. So let's exit out of here. And now we are welcomed with the nice Zorin OS desktop once again. So let's open up a terminal and let's open up NeoFetch. So now for my final thoughts about this awesome operating system. So it definitely looks really beautiful. I love the desktop looks. It's maybe one of my favorite ones, honestly. It's so great, but I do still think it's a bit too heavy for the Raspberry Pi 4 at the moment. Maybe if they do release pre installed images they might do some more optimizations but i still don't think it's going to come to a point as where it's going to be as fast and responsive as let's say ubuntu mate or raspberry pi os but on for pcs they do have zorin os Lite, which is based off xfce so if they do port that version to the raspberry pi 4 we could have some luck with having some really nice performance so i'm waiting to see if they do release that and if they will i will also make a video on that because that could be pretty cool and yeah, so this is Zorin OS for the Raspberry Pi 4. I've had a pretty fun experience with it, playing around with it, installing it, and it's pretty cool. You can install any software you can on Ubuntu. It will also work with no problem on this because it basically is Ubuntu. But yeah, so this is Zorin OS 16 running on my Raspberry Pi 4. So what do you think about this? Does it look like a cool operating system to you? Are you going to try it out? Let me know down below in the comments, and thank you for watching.